world more conflict today between people trying to build dwellings or shacks and live on land and police and private security contractors in the Ravi Ridge area of Gauteng. There's been an upsurge of what many people call land invasions during the COVID-19 lockdown. You'll understand this dynamic. We see it all over the place. Someone will move into an urban area looking for a job. There's no place for them to live. And as a result of that, they feel they are forced to build some kind of dwelling and live on land that is not occupied or is vacant. Nomzamo Zondo is executive director of the Socio-Economic Rights Institute. She joins us now. Nomzamo, good afternoon to you. We, we see the situation developing in many places, always near urban areas, always near cities. A group of people try to build a shack in an area. The police come to remove them. There's a huge tense standoff that develops. What does the law say? Does someone have the legal right to build a shack on land that's not being used? Good afternoon, Stephen. Um, so unfortunately, the law does not give people that right. But what it does, it gives the state an obligation to ensure that people who can't have access to land because of their position in the past have easier access, have, have, have easier means where they can access land. So it means that the state must put together a plan to make sure that people who, as you say, people who are moving into urban areas uh, to, find, to find work, have a, me a, a way to actually find some sort of shelter. Does it matter who owns the land? So if you've got a piece of vacant land, and I mean, we see this all over the place, you know, there'll be a piece of land, sometimes in a very expensive area, that's unused for decades, you know. Does it matter who owns the land, if it's an individual or a company, or if it's government land that's vacant? Look, so government is in a, in, is in a very special position because it, it, it has the obligation to realize people's rights to housing, right? So it means if someone is, is coming uh, to the government, to say house me, the government has an obligation to respond to that request. And what, what we see, as you're saying, people always assume that if it's government land, then they have a right to occupy it. Actually, the position is, is very, it's very, it's different to that in that there's, a, there's an obligation on this, on how the state responds, right? It's not that the state has an, has, has an obligation to house you because you're on its land, but because it is a state and it must um, make sure that the right to housing is realized, it, it, it must act reasonably. Which means that in instances like we've seen in Rabi Ridge or in other communities in Etebuino in, in, in Cape Town, what the state has to do is first engage with people who are trying to come onto its land. The response can't be, as we've seen, uh, to send in the police, to send in uh, the JMPD to respond with violence. Um, what's expected of the state is to say, okay, cool, you want to, um, you've Either you, you want to settle on my land or you have settled on my land. Who are you? What are your needs? Are you able to house yourself without my assistance? And then to respond to that request. And this is already recognized in the PI Act, which is the, the act that, that deals with evictions, which says if it's an organ of state um, or, 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 or a municipality or, or a province that's trying to evict you, there's an obligation on it to identify firsthand where it would move you if it was evicting you. There's also, I mean, there's always a sense in these things that time is really important. You sort of have 48 hours or landowners feel they have 48 hours. And sometimes the people who are moving onto land feel that, that if they can live there for 48 hours or for a week, the legal position changes. What does the law say about this issue of timing? So that's a very interesting question, Stephen, because right now, Seri is litigating a case, is intervening in a case in the Western Cape of behalf of Asalio Asabjondo. And the argument that we're making in that case is that actually it's not about time, it's about whether or not you've taken possession of that land. And on, on, on our understanding of the law, as far back as the 1950s, taking possession means starting to construct um, a shelter or a home. It doesn't mean occupying it. And it, doesn't, it doesn't actually depend on how much time you've been there. The moment that you have put up uh, a side of a shack, that you, you, you've started to construct your structure, then you, you have possession. And unfortunately, the ugly word that you don't want to hear, then you can't be despoiled by the owner. The owner must first go to court and say, Nomzama is on my land. She's trying to build a structure on my land. This is my land. And I, I, as a person, if it's a company or a private person, I, I don't want her there. I haven't given her permission. I want the court that to actually direct her to move, to, to move away. And the court will then have to look at what the common law says around that. Of course, the, the situation is quite different if the person is occupying and living on the land, because then the Pi Act applies. And it's a completely different process, which does include an inquiry into what would happen to that person if they were evicted. 
Okay, but this is all around vacant land, right? If the land's being used by a factory, what happens then? The, the, the position is actually is actually the same. The position is very much the same, Stephen. I think it's, it's your question is <coughs> about you know, the private land. So if someone occupies a factory, right? Uh, let's say there's a there's a disused part of the factory, and they and they've lived there, or or they start to live there for even for an hour. The process we believe in the law is that the, the owner must first approach the court to authorize them removing that person. And this is required by the constitution, right? It says, we know our ugly past, where, where the person with power, the per person who's the owner would simply just remove you, not caring what would happen to you. Now a court must come between the person who's occupying and occupying the person who owns and determine what must happen to that to that property. So if it's, if, if it's a factory that's operating, but it's in a part of the factory that's been forgotten, the obligations remain the same. Okay. Now, I mean, so that's the law, and the law is to sort of manage disputes. But what's really happening, and, and tell me if you agree with my sort of understanding of it, there's this dynamic, I think it might be unstoppable. People come to cities because there are no opportunities for them in, in rural areas. They need a job. They come to a place with a job where they think they'll be able to find a job. And there's no land for them. There's nowhere for them to build a shack. There's no formal housing for them to move into. And often these are people who are unemployed, have very low incomes, so then, in a situation like that, what policy should government be implementing? And I, I realize it's probably not just government, but what, what kind of policy should a society like ours try and implement to try and resolve this very difficult dynamic? So our constitution, uh, Stephen, says we must respect everybody's right to dignity, right? And having people having no shelter um, is immediately undermines their right to dignity. And, and I want to respond in relation to the state and to private property owners. Um, so on, on, on behalf of the state, there is a duty actually to, to make sure that there is a way that those people can access land or can access shelter. So if you think of places like Deep Slot, if you think of uh, big parts of Katia Home, those were managed land settlements, right? So there's an obligation on the state to actually make uh, a process where people can have access to land without res resorting to, to unlawful occupation. In relation, and, and there are already pro, um, there's policies in our law which allow for that to happen. So, for instance, if you look at informal settlements and the recognition of informal settlements and provision of services to them under the upgrade of, of informal settlements program, that's a way through which government is responding to people who would, who would otherwise be, be, be homeless by using the resources that they have through, through the housing settlement development grant. On the other hand, as a private property owner, as someone who is in South Africa with, with our country of landlessness, understanding that for someone who is sitting in the rural areas without a job, without job opportunities, it makes sense for them to want to move cl closer to, uh, to the urban core and try and get to those opportunities. If you find yourself in, 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 in the different circumstances that someone has occupied your land, your first response should not be to call the police to even, to even run to court, your first response is to attempt to meaningfully engage with them. Your, your response should be to try and get the state to, to engage with them. And, 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 and I, I want to just pick up on, on a story that happened um, last week, which was an eviction in, 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 in Rosebank uh, on Bombas Road, where we saw a state intervention, but that state intervention was about actually because neighbors were complaining that there's people who've been evicted who are on our street, and the city kept going there to say, we just want to move you away. Um, and what we should be encouraging is a culture that says we understand you are South African, we understand that you are landless, and what we want to what we want to know is how we, can we assist you, and actually putting measures in place where the state are able to where the state is able to respond, even in issues that come about unplanned. So instead of, of, of always having responses, we send our anti land invasion unit, we send the police. We should have as, a, as first of all we should we should understand what is the um, what are the housing needs in each different municipality? Uh, do a needs analysis. Um, already identify how you can respond to those needs. Like what, what land do you already own? What, what needs to happen on that land to actually make it habitable? And then using that to, to put in place a, a structured a land, a land release. Um, Nomzama, I imagine one of the issues that leads to this conflict, this tension, is. I'm going to use this phrase for now, but I, but I, re, I reserve the right to change my mind based on, on what you say, um, is, the, is the idea of perceived scarcity of urban land. What I'm saying is that people are moving into an area because there's nowhere else for them to live and because it's close to the job, right? Uh, and, and I understand, of course, that the, the complexity, the difficulty 
uh, and the unchanged nature of apartheid spatial development, which means that poor people live very far away from work and rich people live very close to work. That's essentially what happens. Now, the Gauteng Provincial Government is supposed to have a policy of what's called lap, rapid land release. So it's going to take land that's owned by government, whether it be the city, the province or national, in Gauteng and let people live on that land. Now, would that, res would that reduce what I'll call again for the moment, you know, the perception of land scarcity and reduce the levels of conflict or not really? It would, right? Stephen, if, if you're listening to the community in, in, in Rabi Ridge, you can see that clearly there's no communication between them and the province and between them and the city of Johannesburg. So if I imagine that if residents live, let's say, in Alexander, and they are told that in Alexander, we've identified in, and around Alexander, we've identified these 20 people, um, and our plan is to ensure that some of you are able to be set occupied. People will not be will not be having as much conflict as we are having now. Uh, the reality is that there isn't at this point. We don't know what the government's plan is in relation to land distribution. And even though we know that Gauteng has a has a, a rapid land release program, we don't know what that program's plans are. We don't know how many how, how, how much land they plan to release in which areas who is meant to benefit. So to, to an extent, communication would ease some of these conflicts. And at this point, we don't have that. Nomzamo Zondo, really appreciate the time as always. Thank you very much indeed, the Executive Director of the Socioeconomic Rights Institute. Well